How are OFDM carrier spacing and the time samples of the transmitted signal related? And here we've got a representation of a vector in the frequency domain of OFDM carrier constellation points. So this is a baseband vector where you, into each of the elements of this vector, you put the QAM constellation point that you want to go in the first subcarrier, the second subcarrier, the third subcarrier, and so on. So I'm going to label these subcarrier 1 up to subcarrier M. And so this is a vector. Now what happens in OFDM is that this vector is put into an inverse discrete Fourier transform. And there's details about this on the channel and you can find the links in the description below this video. And here we're going to represent on this side the time samples. So we've got the complex valued constellation points through an inverse discrete Fourier transform to give you the time samples that you're going to play out into the channel. And I'm drawing two here to highlight the fact that there is a real component and an imaginary component to the time domain. So this is in the time domain here and this was in the frequency domain over here. Okay, so we've got the real component and the imaginary component, and we use quadrature modulation to transmit these signals at the carrier frequency of the cos wave and the sine wave. So the real component gets multiplied by the cos wave, and the imaginary component gets multiplied by a sine wave. And for more information on quadrature modulation and transmitting complex baseband signals, which this is, uh, you can check out a link in the description below. Now, what is this filter here? And this is the important thing about the time samples, linking the time samples to the carrier spacing. So this is a pulse shaping filter. And again, more information on pulse shaping filters, look in the description below. But let's look at two uh, particular types of pulse shaping filters that we might choose. And here they are. One is these time samples. These are just, again, to remind you, these are just numbers in a computer or in the digital transmitter of the OFDM system. So they are just numbers. They need to be transferred into an actual waveform which can be transmitted. And that is the job of the pulse shaping filter. So if we put this number here, the sequence of digital numbers uh, into this pulse shaping filter that looks like this, a square one, then we know the Fourier transform is gives a sync function and the width of that sync function is 1 divided by capital T. So this is the, where we're the first time where we're seeing the time duration. This is the time samples here of the transmitted signal. Uh, these samples are going out of a time period capital T. So these are high rate samples going out at capital T. If we used a square pulse shaping filter, we'd have a sync function in the frequency domain. We need to think of how this relates back to the OFDM subcarriers. That's what we're talking about here. So let's think of another pulse shaping filter. There's a sync function, uh, and this has a Fourier transform that's a square. And so this, again, it, it comes down here at uh, 1. In this case, it's 1. I haven't drawn them to scale here. This is 1 divided by 2t. 1 divided by 2t. So this is a narrower bandwidth if you use a sync pulse shaping filter. The width across this band is 1 divided by capital T. Now, let's think how this relates back over to here, to this uh, uh, this digital vector in the frequency domain, which is where we've put our complex constellation points that we want to go in each of the subcarriers. So there's a video on the channel relating the elements of the DFT to real frequencies. And we know that the element at M divided by 2 plus 1, so that element along this vector here, that element there corresponds to the Nyquist frequency. That is 1 divided by 2t. So if we are sending our time samples out at a rate of 1 on t, because they length t long, so they're going out at a rate of 1 on t, then the frequency of this this is a vector, remember, just of numbers, complex numbers, but that corresponds to a frequency when you've put it through the uh, DFT and IDFT, corresponds to a frequency of 1 divided by 2t.
So these, and we know from the DFT that these frequencies here, as we go increasing along this vector, it, it represents increasing frequency values. And then uh, because it's a discrete time, uh, the basis functions repeat. And so these elements here are the negative frequencies, or they're going closer to the repeating basis function uh, of the DC. So this element of our vector here is going to be representing down here in the positive frequencies up to 1 divided by 2t. If we're plotting the frequency domain of our intended Q, uh, intended OFDM symbol, then those frequency values here map down to there, and they might, I'm just drawing them continuous here, but each one of these is discrete, uh, representing a number that wants to be transmitted in a subchannel. And then these elements here are representing down over here. It's just the property of the, in, of the discrete Fourier transform. As I said, more information uh, in other videos on the channel, find the links below. Uh, but this uh, here, so here we have a representation of elements, the complex numbers that might be in these here that our data is wanting to send. This is what we have across this band. Now, how does this all link to the OFDM that you're familiar with? Well, of course, each of these uh, components in here, each of these frequency elements here, uh, is going to be within this bandwidth over here. Okay, so the subchannels that you've probably seen in OFDM systems with the sync functions here, uh, um, if we have this one over here where, where it's flat across the band, then the heights of these are given by the data that we're wanting to send, the constellation points that we're sending. So all of the subchannels are fitting into here. Now, how many of these subchannels are there? Well, we can see straight away now there are M of them. So the length of this vector was length m. That means there are m subchannels across this bandwidth. We know that this bandwidth is this because this is that what that frequency represents. That comes from us knowing that we are transmitting at a rate of 1 divided by t. So therefore, the sampling rate is 1 divided by t. And the carrier spacing is then going to be, well, it's 1 divided by t, which is the full width of the bandwidth, divided by m subcarriers. So if we look at a, a particular example of this, let's look at 802.11a for example, IEEE 802.11a, then we have the bandwidth is equal to 1 divided by t, which equals uh, for 802.11a equals 20 megahertz. Uh, we have m equals 64 in 802.11a, they use m equals 64. And therefore, the carrier spacing equals, I'll just draw it up here, I'll say the carrier spacing, uh, this implies a carrier spacing of 312.5 uh, kilohertz in the 802.11a standard. Uh, the symbol length, maybe we'll also say what the symbol length is, uh, the symbol length, the OFDM symbol length, is going to be uh, length uh, here is going to be uh, 1.25 times the, uh, the the tm because this is the OFDM symbol length. I should put OFDM here. So the full OFDM symbol length. So the length of this vector here. This is these are there's m of these. Uh, here, so there's m elements here, each element lasts for capital T, so therefore you've got T times m, and then there's a 0.25 for a cyclic prefix. And so for more information about cyclic prefix in OFDM, uh, go and see uh, the videos below. And this corresponds to four microseconds. So these are giving you some indication of the numbers in uh, a practical system, 802.11a. Uh, we make the point also that they don't use all of the subcarriers for data. They only use uh, 48 of the subcarriers for data, uh, and they use uh, 64 QAM as well. So 64 QAM has six bits per symbol, uh, and they use three-quarter rate uh, coding for error correction. So you've, if you multiply the 48 channels of these that they actually send data in, so 48 times six, because they use six, uh, 64 QAM, times uh, the inverse of this length here, times three quarters gives you 54 megabits per second. 
So that's how you can see the relationship between the length of the vector, the number of subcarriers, and the OFDM 802.11a data rate of 54 megabits per second. So if this video has given you more insights, uh, please give it a thumbs up. It helps others to find the video. Um, of course, subscribe to the channel for more videos and check out the description below where you'll find a web page with a fully categorized listing of all the videos on the channel.